Our final item is not necessarily an important item, but will help us gain a little bit of money, and that's the iron ore located in this chest. With these items in hand, I'm going to stop by one of the goddess statues just to make sure I don't run out of health on my way out of here, and then it'll be time to go back to Rant's village. I really wish the goddess statues wouldn't repeat what they already told us, but at least they give us some health out of it. The goddess statues will also give us our magic back, but as you can see, the magic doesn't decrease very much from our magic of fire, so we can use it a lot, but we'll take the magic refill anyway. Just like the first game, backtracking through areas can be a real pain. The good news is, just like the first game, you can use wings to get back out, but they're still pretty expensive. The other thing is, you'll get a magic of return later on in the game, which will allow you to instantly teleport back to villages. So that's going to be very nice to use later on. When we make it back to Rant's village, it's time first to get the medicine for Lilia. Go all the way to the right where the brother was located, and you'll see that the doctor's standing right next to him as well. By talking to him, he'll take both of the items that we found from us, and then give us the medicine for Lilia. With the medicine, we return to Bernice's house. She'll of course thank us for giving the medicine, which will help cure Lilia. And there she gives us the Magic of Return, which I just mentioned a little bit ago. And that is probably the best spell we can get in this game. It allows us to instantly teleport back to any of the towns that we've already visited in the game from Greece. any point in the game. I was about to die of a disease I knew nothing about. Sorry about but this, just had to make a small life. edit so that I could continue on. Now we go to the shop up here, and he'll give us 3,000 gold for that iron ore that we found in the ruins, which greatly increases our money count. With that increase in money, I'm going to buy the next sword, the long sword. I would also like to buy the second armor, but unfortunately I don't have enough money yet. But, that great place for training is just around the corner, and we're going to use that now to greatly increase our money count, as well as our experience. Going to the house down here, we'll meet a guy who says there's some funny stuff going on in his basement. 
Once we're in the basement, we're going to use that bell that we found in that whole Divine Ruins area. By using the bell, the wall will open up, revealing the path to the final statue, as well as a whole lot of enemies. Be very careful when fighting these enemies, because of course they can gang up on you very easily. The fire spell will help to keep some of the distance from you and them, but if you get low on health, you can go back to Bernice's house and get full health right away after talking to her. So I'm going to train for just a little bit before delivering the final book, then I'm going to train a little bit more in order to gain enough money to buy the next set of armor and all that I'll need. With a little bit more experience and my health refilled, I go into the back of the basement to another part of that ruins area, which leads us to a divine cave area, which is the location of the sixth and final goddess statue. After talking to this statue, and returning the final book, we get the Scroll of Guidance. What this scroll allows us to do is talk to any of the other goddess statues located within the game. With that scroll, it's now time to grind for a little while. We're going to be earning enough money to buy some more of the armor, as well as the katana from the sword shop, because after this time, we won't really be coming back to this village at any point in the game. There is another village later on in the game, which will become our main headquarters for a long time till the end of the game, which has a shop in it. But for now, this is going to be our last opportunity to buy items for a while. After I received enough money to buy my next sword, I'm stopping by Bernice's house and got a full health back, and then I'm going to stop by the item shop in order to buy the sword. Now with the katana in hand, the grinding will get a little bit easier for the enemies since I'm a little bit more leveled, as well as I have a better sword. But now it's time to head back into that basement to grind a little bit more, so that I can get my next bit of items. After I've earned enough money and gained some levels, I refill my health once again at Bernice's house, and now it's time to buy some more armor, and now it's time to finally leave Rance Village and continue on in the game. It takes a little bit of time in order to get the money for the items, but trust me, it'll be well worth it in the end. With our new equipment, all the quests that we've made to complete so far are done now in Rance Village. It's our time to go back down into the ruins, and now we're going to head to a brand new area of the game, an ice-filled mountain. To get to this ice area, we continue going the way we normally would to go back into that ruins, but as you can see, this door, which was once closed, is now opened up, and once we go inside, we're on this ice mountain. As far as dungeons and mazes go, the ice mountain is much, much easier than the previous area, and a heck of a lot easier than the Solomon Shrine, which we'll have to deal with later in the game. The enemies are a little bit more challenging than the ruins area, and one of the reasons is some of them, as you've already seen, are on a little bit smaller platforms, and when you're in a smaller area with enemies in the Yeast games, it can be a real pain, especially considering how much you have to hit them. Our first item that we get in the Ice Mountain is the Misty Ice Drops. 
Now what these do is in another cave that we're going to have to backtrack just a little bit to get to, what it allows us to do is make a bridge using the ice that we just got from that ice drops. Inside this area is where we have to use those misty ice drops. As we walk all the way to the left, it's kinda hard to know when you're first playing whether or not this area is it, and it's probably just a hit or miss game in terms of finding the correct spot. But this is the spot, and once you use them, it creates the bridge, which allows us to go to the other part of this ice mountain. 